guys and gals, never here for Drake Wing Game, and a seven new ounce worth of gaming drag today. I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Sparks, A Tale of Ink. So, yeah, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up for as little as $5. Y'all can help support the channel, get some awesome rewards like permanent access to our community Discord server, and full access to upcoming Not Safe for Work videos. Anyway, y'all, let's go ahead and jump right back in. Alarm chain, you were up, and let's go. All right. The staff bearing, the staff bearing deer, Braden Twistwood, did not care. His ever vigilant yet wise pose never changed, no matter the month. How it must be, Zankin asked himself, to be eternal, to be known to everyone, but never able to tell about but never able to tell about yourself. Perhaps the sovereign could answer a question like that, but it certainly was none to ponder now, as he had to follow his task. The first wagon he stopped by had extended a tarp onto two narrow wooden state wooden stakes, to keep both the wares on show and the customers dry. On display were mostly tools for preservation, jars, flasks, baskets, pots, and wooden boxes. A small sign read handcrafted with a little heart next to it. The woodwork was rough and proved the sign's clear message, which reminded Zankin of a neighbor he had that enjoyed carving statues from leftover wood. He picked up one of the wooden figures decorating the table, displaying a fox with a rough edge or two. He almost got lost in the comforting memories of his hometown. Cracking fire, crackling fires, the sound of metal clinging against anvils, people singing in the streets, and the smell of freshly baked shoreland pastry surfaced before his mind's eye. He enjoyed all those alone until that one fateful day when he met Russo. A high-pitched voice interrupted his thoughts, and he put the figurine down again, attempting to present himself proper. A rather round squirrel lady with a colorful apron that spanned her entire length, delicately crafted wooden shoes, and a hat pitched similar to a tent exited the wagon. I knew I heard someone. How can I help, little man? For a moment, Zankin disliked the comment, until the woman drew closer and overshadowed the malnourished student with her huge build. His eyes panned up, and he took a few steps back, while his gaze froze for just a moment on the small iron bell hanging on the woman's belt. I can't believe we actually got someone from the Academy on the final day of rain. You seem to be in a hurry. We sadly are all out of writing supplies. Actually, um... Ashes. Uh, this must sound ridiculous now that I think about it. Oh, come now, dear. No such thing as ridiculous request for a merchant. I will either sell it or not. Well, you see, a professor and I... Something important, then. Let me let me fetch my list so we can see if I have anything in store that is not currently in my head. <laughs> she let out... She let out a high-pitched squeak of a laugh before turning on her heels. No, wait! We are looking for a way of transport for an expedition, though I'm not even sure yet if we'll be able to go. Well, no hurting in securing a route, but we are leaving on the mo we are leaving on the morrow already. So are we. That is awfully spontaneous. I it is, yes. Well, where do you want to go? Here, I have a map. Just point me in the general direction. The woman rolled up a thick, detailed map of the flatlands, and Zankin showed her the destination near his home. The other map still fresh on his mind, he saw the glaring differences in the size of the capital. Forests, rivers, and other natural sites hadn't changed over time, though, as expected. <coughs> oh, excuse me. Is that you know? The shopkeeper's face distorted into a frown. Oh, um... Oh, um, apologies, but that area... She sounded genuinely sorry, a hint of sadness carried in her voice. That is very much off from anything that is worth visiting for us. Oh, aren't you buying new tools or supplies or anything like that from the artisans nearby? Their work is really good. I grew up there, so I can guarantee the quality. The look on her face changed once again, features turning soft, and her previous courtesy smile dropped. As if the woman was pondering something, she shook her head and rolled the map back up. No, no, sorry. She turned her back to him and dropped down the wooden cover of the wagon. Perhaps we will find someone else. I'll try to get into contact with more well-traveled merchants to help a little. Zankin felt the disappointment seep through his bones. Calum always said not to expect success on the first attempt. The desire to be inside, not standing in the rain, overpowered that of a learning experience. As he started going to the next merchant that looked as if they would take the other take to other cities once the sun was not clouded by rain anymore, he passed one of the stables for animals that pulled the wagons and coaches. On the stable hand, the stable hand, a stressed-looking skunk took in paperwork by merchants that towered over him. Likely a young academy goer that tried to earn some extra gems. If it wasn't for the, weren't for the rain, Zankin would have loved to take a closer look at the animals housed in the stables. During the sunny months, it was usually just horses from flatland merchants, but now he could steal some glances at others as well. Golden furned camels eating away at massive, at massive leaves that had been brought in from the desert lands, towering over the horses with their massive frames. Retites pecking away at seed and meat, their plumage far more muted than the bright coloring of the horses next to them. He also spotted a pair of bovines he had never seen before, carrying proud, long horns with golden-brown, shaggy fur, but to suffer from horrible matting in the downpour. Zankin assumed they were from overseas. 
Their owner, a proud-looking peacock man wearing delightfully colorful clothes with patterns that Zankin could study for days, took their reins from the stable hand and left a few vials filled with gemstones on the table. Zankin entertained the thought to ask the man with the animal what animals they were, but instead left a mental note, as he did not intend to get wetter than necessary. From the corner of his eye, he could see a figure lingering behind the stable, cloaked in worn clothes. They seemed to notice Zankin looking at them and disappeared behind the stable to hide out of sight. As he tried to focus on the figure, he accidentally left himself open to be bumped into by a much bigger person. A guard wearing solid armor covering most of his stature looked down on him. Their tavern, God's Heart, surrounded by a stylized river and stars shining above it, suggested they came from the capital city. While looking down on him, the guards shook their heads slowly and went on with their patrol. They can curved around them and would catch and could catch how they cloaked how the cloaked figure stole away the gemstones resting on the stable stable hand's counter. He was on the verge of shouting out, but after just turning away to look for the guards, the stable hand already noticed the theft. And during the moments of distress, the thief had already disappeared out of view. Oh boy. Alright, y'all. I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there while I get some water. Be right back. Alright, y'all, and we are back. Alright, let's jump right back into it. Okay. <clears throat> Zankin thought back to the stacks of paper Gale had to fight with and understood their size. The next few attempts to find a merchant to take on the offer went poorly as well. Most were appalled by the one-day limit of preparation, while others quickly scoffed at the destination. Zankin bought a portion of dumplings his father liked to make in the style of the shores. The merchant came from there as well. The two managed to talk a little, but the merchant declined to bring them, due to lack of space and guarantee that he would be able to sell, them sell enough after the detour. After taking a bite, enjoying the mixture of meat and vegetables hidden away in the dough, he set his sights on a different merchant that currently rolled up his tent. The colorful gecko had some help from two other lizards that Zankin could not recognize with their hoods up to protect them against the rain, the only telltale sign of their species being the tails peeking out from their cloaks. As he approached, the man's eyes widened and a smirk crept across his face. Greetings, I'm... Looking for passage near the Slayer, ain't ya? Zankin was amazed by how quickly information was spreading through the merchant's networks. It was not as if he spent all too much time out there, out here either. Yes, exactly. It's for our... Expedition. Yeah, I know. Sorry, mate. Can't take you with us. Wagon is small. We're three people and have far too many wares that need peddling. Can't even take one more up there. Should have looked for people with carriages earlier than this, I reckon. I didn't expect this to happen either. It's more an act of desperation. As I said, mate, very sorry, but no chance with us. But I heard someone's round who might take you along. Was interested in the talk about you. The news let Zankin forget, forget the rain for a moment, he took a step out from the canopy he had hidden himself under. Ignoring the rain droplets on his fur, skin, clothes, and his food for a few moments, he got even closer to the gecko. Could you tell me who's looking for me? Or where I can find them? Oh, you're really desperate, ain't you? Bad, especially in the presence of the merchants, I tell you. But you won't have to wait for long. I can already see his smug silhouette drawing near. So you know each other? Kid, you always gotta know your business rival, especially on the damn flats. Man's been in the business for just a few years and already welcome on every marketplace. Makes you wonder how much he paid the mercantile guild to get an easy reputation. I'm afraid I don't understand. I ain't gonna give you the details, but the life of a merchant ain't easy. Really only got reputation in skilled war names. Zanka looked down at the gecko and noticed a slightly rusty bell hanging off his belt together with some purchase and with some pouches. The other merchants had them as well. Merchant life was an unwalked path for him, despite the fact that it was only thanks to them that a semblance of progress washed over the lands. The bell blended in well with the other plain colors of his garb, a new world-style tunic and simple pants in plain colors that made the merchant's scales shine even brighter. The man himself laughed a high-pitched laugh as he noticed Zankin's gaze wandering over him. If you're curious about it, might as well ask old T.R. He loves talking business that's not his. What? Man's acting high and mighty, but has been barely a merchant for four years. My boys are here, my boys here are more experienced than him. He pointed at the two helpers that were now in the process of rolling the tent up. One of them turned around, meeting Zankin's gaze, and shrugged and get, got back to loading up crates onto a wooden, wooden wagon. Right. Zankin shrugged and returned. As he turned around to face Zankin once again, his eyes widened even more, a feat that the student thought impossible with the gecko's already huge eyes. Ah, I better get my things done before I'm... His accelerated voice was cut off by another one. Involved in conversation? But my good friend, you have nothing to fear when talking with me. Oh. Hello there, merchant. Zankin didn't try to stare too much. At first, he wouldn't think the man was doing all too well, considering the rather rustic clothes. But the overpowering smell of orange and cedar wood quickly told him a different story. Perfumes were hard to make, so their prices were high. Some of the professors enjoyed wearing them, but otherwise he didn't come into contact with the fragrances much. Fierno, just good to see you. Are you all readied up for the sun? 
The gecko's expression quickly faded into a grimace as the wolf kept on talking to him. His voice was low and filled with a stingy joy. Words thrown sharply as if they were daggers. I'm doing all right, good TR. How about you? Found that potential miracle client you've been talking about for some time ago yet. And not quite, not quite yet, my friend. But I think I'm drawing closer. Those Academy gems are enticing, aren't they? So special about them. Aye, if you do contracts with businesses, the money you have is usually only ever on paper. The Academy prefers to actually pay with physical gems. Business with them is always good. Which you seem to be interested in. From whom? Well, to be fully honest, from you. If you would like to pursue such ventures. His tail began to wag and his ears perked up a little. Would you do in would you do in some more dry and would you do so in a more dry environment, would you agree? The merchant's idle gaze finally wandered towards Zankin, who felt a shiver wander up his spine as he felt the merchant's eyes on him. There's something about going near Silay. He grinned, baring his two golden fangs. I figured from your attire you might be the student looking for passage. So you know the situation already then? Perhaps. If a tent not far from here we can discuss the details. If you would be so kind as to follow me. He pointed further away from the market square. Shivers overcame Zankin once again as he thought about walking through the rain to get there. TR began walking onwards, giving a quick wave to the other merchant. Thanks a lot for your help. I didn't help much, boy. Take care with him. Who knows what tricks are up his sleeve. Fierno, Fierno grabbed the last sack and threw it onto his own cart and decided to disappear into it, as his helpers had before. He never imagined the life of a merchant to be this tightly packed with hardships. Between the regulations and places, he was more he was more welcome than not. It seemed a heavy, self-made burden. Yet he was glad about it. Without them, the world would seem far less connected. Quickly, he turned around and followed after T.R., who already had a slight head start. T.R. was less talkative than he was in the presence of a fellow merchant, but Zankin didn't mind gathering his thoughts a little before discussing his plans. He would have to ask about potential routes, the duration of the drive, and how many times they would have to stop because of the animals pulling the carriage. Yet his, inner work, yet his inner workings were disrupted as the, main, as the man in front of him came to an abrupt halt. He stood before a middle-sized tent with a fine gray tarp in which some decorations were emblazoned with golden thread. Here we are. I am not expecting any customers anymore today, especially since I am a little further away from the main square than the others who have yet to wrap up for tomorrow. Come in, but don't get, don't get the flap open for too long. With surprising nimbleness to his step, the merchant disappeared into his tent, the flap quickly closing behind him. Could, could have at least left it open for me. Zankin kept his voice low as he grumbled and opened the flap inside, inside himself. He stood in place for a moment. The tent was filled with all kinds of crates and barrels, only a few smaller wares still decorating a side shelf and some tools poking out of sack, out of racks and barrels. With all the metal tools, Zankin was not surprised at the merchant's supposed wealth. It must cost a fortune. The tent had, the tent had nothing to stabilize a visitor's footing, which meant that Zankin had, to, had escaped the rain from above but still would have to deal with the moisture below. Though the loamy, the loamy ground was not completely soaked yet, every step produced a squishing sound that made Zankin rather uncomfortable. Oi, what did I just... But the warming came too late. A quick gust of wind decided to visit the tent as well and blew the torches and candles out that were illuminating its insides. Great, fantastic. I was meaning to fetch something to dry off, but now I have to run around some even more. Close the damn tent already. Sovereign's balls. All right, I'm going to go ahead and pause it right there. Thank you all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Oh, I'm tired, y'all. I'm going to go to bed. Love you all, and I'll see you all in the next video. Bye-bye!